What is up everybody? It is Wick here and today we're going to be talking about things to look for at garage sales and thrift stores, rummage sales, auctions, flea markets, all those places. These are things that have surprising value. Most things just by looking at them, you're just not going to know they're worth as much as they are. I know people have started really liking these videos. I'll try to get them out more often. Just hit that like button for me. Let me know if you're still enjoying them. Every time I make one of these videos, people send me messages talking about things that they've found that were in the videos. Just yesterday at a rummage sale, I found a dream phone, which I had in a video two or three videos back. You know, complete, it's worth like $250, $300. So nice pickup for a dollar at a rummage sale for sure. But let's just jump right into it. First item I've had in a video before because I've found and sold it a few years ago. I've never had it in one of these Bolo videos. This is one of these Hot Wheels Acceleracer, Acceleracers drone sweeper. Just by looking at it, it looks kind of like a, you know, just one of the basic plastic toys that you'd find on a thrift store shelf. But they have surprising value and a lot of Hot Wheels stuff is valuable, but there's even more stuff that's not valuable. So it's always good to know some of these kind of cheap looking plastic toys, uh, what they're actually looking like and what they can be worth. And this one, I think I sold mine for like $180. You know, I don't remember. It has been probably five years now uh, since I found and sold that. They're still valuable. They're still selling. There's not a lot of them on eBay, uh, but when they hit eBay in good condition, they sell very quickly. You see 200, 189. Uh, there's one for 150, 150, 120. Obviously, they need to work. Uh, it's, you drive over Hot Wheels cars and it picks them up. So price, condition, working, it doesn't matter on something like this. But just a cool Hot Wheels toy. I've been on the lookout for another one of these. I've yet to find one. Maybe get a rummage sale this year. Rummage sale season's kicked in and I've been finding some pretty cool stuff. So wouldn't mind finding a few more of these this year. You know, VCRs are a good reselling bread and butter item. You find them fairly often, definitely not as much as you used to. And they bring decent money, especially good Sony ones. But even more so are some of these character themed VCRs and probably the king would be the Pokemon uh, with the Pikachu remote. Now this one's showing $4,000. Who knows if it actually sold for that. I think this one down here, brand new, for uh, 1884, probably did sell for that. I got three bids on it. And you can see even without the actual Pikachu remote, this one just has a basic remote. Still $256, 240 uh, without any remote. I know somebody who has one of these. He just buys electronics and kind of hoards them. Um, <laughs> he told me he found one. I need to try to buy it from him. I'm pretty sure he said it didn't have the remote. But you know what? Now that I think about it, it seems like he said it was in the box. I don't know. I'm going to have to talk to him again. Especially if you was just to find the Pikachu remote, you know, it's going to be worth a decent amount. Even for repair, uh, they're selling for $100. It's rare. There's not going to be a whole lot of them uh, out there in the wild. And they sell very quick when they hit eBay. So still looking for my first one. And I've talked about TVs before on the channel. The vintage tube TV, CRT TVs, and how video game collectors and people who are into retro games are buying these things up. And they're actually not that easy to find anymore. You remember back in the day, everybody was getting rid of their old TVs. Uh, Goodwill eventually quit taking them so you can't buy them at places like Goodwill. Most thrift stores won't even put them out. Your only chance is a garage sale. Uh, possibly a rummage sale. I bet a lot of rummage sales don't even take them. It's rare that I, I see a TV like this at a rummage sale. And probably the best place to find them is just out in the trash, <laughs> out on the curb that people are throwing this stuff away. But again, with the theme of the uh, Pokemon, VCR, uh, certain themed TVs like this Batman one, it's only a 13 inch, uh, the one with the DVD player with it, uh, 849, 725, really good prices on these. Of course, they, the remotes matter and you can find them. They're not connected. So you could find the TV or you could just find the combo unit. But a lot of people are looking for these kind of TVs. Here's just the TV for 150. There's one for a hundred dollars, but it has $103 shipping, which shouldn't cost that much to ship, uh, which is why uh, normally these things you know sell for around 200 you have to take shipping into account you should be able to ship a tv like this ups uh probably 40 no more than 50 dollars um should be like 35 40 honestly it's only a 13 inch you got to pack these things very well though um look on youtube for some good packing advice uh, if you don't know how to package something like this but it's not just batman uh we're talking about all kinds of special TVs because people remember having these TVs when they were kids and they want to buy them 
They want to put them in their basement or whatever or have their kids use them. Uh, here's a Disney Princess one uh, with the combo unit, DVD, VCR, remotes, and everything. You know, Upwards to $500. A lot of people just want to get rid of these at their garage sales and they'll put them out for just a couple bucks. You just have to be watching for this kind of stuff. Disney Princess TV, it looks like there's a couple different models, but they sell great, especially with the combo unit. See if we can find one. There's one that sold new open box for $359. They priced that too low, whoever sold that. And $250, $229. There's one for $150 with $153 uh, shipped without the, the VCR. So it looks like a, the VCR is very common with these. They, they probably came in the same box originally, maybe. I don't know. And there's other ones. I think there's a, a good SpongeBob one, uh, maybe Scooby-Doo. Here's a, a Disney Cars version, which is also pretty good. Has the DVD player built into it, I think, right? Yeah, DVD player built into it. Still, you know, a couple hundred bucks if you used to happen to find this. Probably not going to pay that much for it. I sold a new inbox TV. Oh, what was it? I think just a uh, Emerson or something. <laughs> I got it a rummage sale for a dollar and sold that for close to 400. So these types of TVs do sell. They sell good. Certain ones, Sony Triniton, vintage ones can really sell great. But I don't want to harp on these TVs too much. Uh, I just wanted to point out some of this stuff because rummage sales are popping up garage sales and that's the kind of place you're going to find these things. Just talk about the JVC Video Sphere TV real quick because I love this thing. I've been looking for it uh, for well years. Probably won't sell it if I actually find one. Uh, space helmet, just a cool piece. Uh, vintage history there. Would love to find one. You know, upwards to six hundred dollars if you find one. Working in good condition. This kind of stuff is out there. Interesting. I didn't know Memrix made a Video Sphere style TV. Looks like they do. Didn't sell for as much new even. Uh, the JVC is seems to be the one people are, are mostly buying. Anyway, uh, really cool stuff. If you happen to find any of these TVs, they can be a little annoying to ship, but still, it's not that bad until you start getting into the 19-inch the and up TVs uh, that don't have their original box. Not just vintage TVs, but vintage telephones that have characters on them are going up in value. I recently sold one of these Garfield telephones. Uh, I got for $7. I sold it for $250. This one brand new. It says brand new, but it's clearly out of the box for $516. I probably should have sold mine for more. It has 13 bids. If somebody's willing to pay for one new out of the box, I don't even see the paperwork being shown with this one and, and all that. I probably could have got more and mine did sell very quickly. I think within a couple days. So there's a few different versions of this Garfield phone. The t the one that sits on the table, still very good money, but the one that hangs on the wall, uh, the one I sold, the Tyco one, actually there's mine right there. Uh, the actual one I sold, $250 plus shipping is what I got for that. But for whatever reason, as far as vintage character phones go, the Garfield one seems to be one of the best, at least that I've seen. So, you know, if you see a Garfield phone out there at a garage sale, uh, definitely pick it up if you can get it cheap enough and they haven't looked it up on eBay, right? So we got some more character phones like uh, the Snoopy Woodstock one here, which you see fairly often out in the wild. And I've skipped it many times because people will price it $30, $40. And it used to only sell on eBay for like $50. And now you see that they are actually going up quite a bit. I uh, got right around $200 uh, pre-owned on some of these. Uh, some of it looks like the more average price is a bit over a hundred. But my point is, uh, these phones are actually going up. People are starting to look for them, collect them. They're becoming harder to find. Here is another one I've actually sold. It's been quite a few years since I've sold it. I bought it at Goodwill. Don't remember what I paid for it. I remember it was in the box. I probably sold it for uh, like $80 to $100. I'm remembering it wasn't worth as much as they are now. And it's a Scooby-Doo phone. Uh, it makes different sounds, I think, when uh, somebody calls you. I did not test mine, you know, with the phone just to make sure the lights and everything worked. And you can see some of these even um, not working or missing the box, missing the handset. Still pretty good money. But... There's not that many on eBay and a lot of people just get rid of these because they think that people don't use telephones and they really don't. But there's a collector market and there's people who do keep telephone lines just to have like their nostalgia room. Uh, nostalgia is a big part of um, reselling because you got to understand why people will buy certain things and pay up for certain things because they 
had them when, with, when they were kids, the memories, all that junk. Everyone falls victim to it, I think. I do. Uh, that's why I buy video games like Nintendo games and collect them uh, just because just looking at them, you know, it, it feels good. So never underestimate what somebody will pay for something. This is worthless to one person, priceless to another. So while we're on the subject of phones, let's talk about these Roxanne vintage phones. These are from the 80s, I think maybe even up into the 90s. They're clear phones with neon lights and people love these things. Again, they probably have memories as a kid talking to their friends on the phone who knows? I never had one. Uh, a lot of people just want to do their whole house in like 80s, right? And they, they need this phone in there if you're going to do that. Definitely around, you know, a couple hundred bucks for these. Um, any clear phone, honestly, look up. The Roxanne ones seem to be probably the most popular. You got the Lone Star here, landline phone, but they're consistently valuable. And we're not going to go too deep into the phone rabbit hole because the vintage phones, there's so many things to look out for and there's so many that's not worth anything that's what's crazy about reselling like look at that phone that conair 80s 90s retro clear phone here doesn't that just scream 80s like and that's why people are wanting to buy this stuff um the colors and the memories so uh 1989 gold star clear phone neon blue any of the, the things that have the colors that are more special just a basic conair phone that's black won't sell for 77 dollars right but clear telephones are great and these are surprisingly valuable as well you wouldn't think vintage cellular phones would be worth much because nobody, I don't even know if you could use this phone if you wanted to. I doubt it. I don't think they'd work with the, the upgraded towers and all that. You know, I don't know anything about that. But many of these old cellular phones you come across, they're not worth much at all resale value. For whatever reason, and I don't know why, this Simon Smart cellular phone uh, from Bell South is a Bolo. $1,325, 12 bids. Over a thousand in the box here. I was 16 bids, close to a thousand with seven. I should do some research on it just to see why you know people are buying it, but it's kind of crazy. I guess maybe it's just rare people collect some of this stuff. But once you get away from the Simons, right, you can start seeing how a lot of these old cell phones just drop off uh, into like the 30s. Here's one for like 20. You know, I've seen that out there before. And if I find them in a thrift store, a lot of times I look them up and I'm just like, like this one here sold for $3 with one bid. And you're like, I'm not buying that even at a, you know, a dollar at a thrift store. But the Simon smart cellular phone worth keeping an eye out for. Here's something else worth keeping an eye out for. These Ellie Smith vintage turtle uh, candle holders. I recently picked up a turtle lamp and another, uh, this is just a trinket box. It's not Ellie Smith or anything, but I mentioned these. So I figured I'd put this in the video as well, just to show you. They're just these glass turtles. Uh, they're candle holders. So they got the circle in top and yeah, they're actually worth a decent amount. Um, over a hundred dollars. Just one of those things that you'd be walking across the table at a garage sale and see some glass pieces. You see the turtle, you're going to want to pick it up, right? Or at least check if it's Ellie Smith. I don't know. I think even not Ellie Smith would sell. And uh, most Ellie Smith stuff, does have a sticker on it, I think. Um, a lot of times the sticker is missing, but if you're getting it cheap enough, it's just worth buying, I think. And Ellie Smith stuff in general is not worth a whole lot of money, uh, but the turtles are desirable. Let me see here. People put, yeah, fairy, fairy lamp. You know, I don't understand it, but I think it's called fairy kai or something. I don't know if it's associated with that. It's just a style like fairy tale type stuff and colors and certain clothing people will buy that kind of stuff i don't know i'm not too into that scene but i notice a lot of people put fairy lamp in there i don't I'm not sure if that's why if you happen to know you can just leave that in the comments so here's something people might not know is worth some decent money and i kind of overlooked these for years um over the past th few years i started looking at them more and buying them and it's new bright stuff and new bright was always kind of like the low-end brand when i was you know, younger. Uh, so when I see new bright stuff, I'm like, oh, that's just new bright. That's not going to be worth it until I found a new bright RC car and sold it for close to $400. And then I was like, oh yeah, I should just keep an eye out on these. I actually got another really good one I picked up recently that I have listed probably too high <laughs> trying to get max dollar out of it. I got it listed like close to $500, I think, because it's a bit rare, but some of the new bright stuff is definitely worth picking up the RC stuff. And you can see the police car here. Uh, some of these Caterpillar cat 
RC stuff, like the excavator, good stuff there. Uh, here's an F-250 Ford, 250 it sold for the police car. And these are just RC cars. I sold the Escalade complete and working for like $350. I sold a white one. I believe that's probably priced a little low. Of course, if you find them new in box, uh, you know, they're worth a lot more money. These are all just pre-owned. $200 Hummer. Uh, I got one recently at a garage sale as well for like 3 or $4. And I sold that for parts because it was missing the remote and had some damage. And it still sold very quickly. Grave Digger. I feel like I've probably missed that actually at a sale. Um, I see Grave Digger stuff a lot and most of it's not worth much. And if I saw it was New Bright before I realized New Bright was valuable, I probably would have left it. There's a cat bulldozer. I actually found one of these Beetles one time. I think it was Goodwill. I don't remember why I left it. It must have had damaged or been priced too high or something. The 175 is looking pretty good. And I think this is another one of those items where the value is going up, more people are looking for them. Anytime I've posted a new bright thing, you just start getting messages on eBay. Lots of lowball offers immediately. People wanting you to pull the tires off and sell them just the tires. It's very strange, but it just goes to show you that people are looking for a lot of this stuff. And not every new bright is going to be, you know, a hundred plus dollars like some of these. If you can find one with the remote, it has the battery. Battery holds a charge. I mean, you can always buy new batteries for it, right? Uh, they're not too bad to buy a generic battery, off-brand battery to put in it. Here's a yellow Hummer. I think this is just the body. It doesn't even have the tires or anything. Uh, best offer, you can't see. And they are annoying to ship because some of them are pretty big. But again, you just have to, to do the shipping right. Uh, ship them like UPS, measure, do calculated shipping and all that. And then we got these Bruder toys. I believe pretty much all of them are made in Germany. Uh, they're kind of just basic looking toys that you would find on a shelf at a thrift store or a garage sale. Again, we're looking at some of this cat stuff. Very nice prices. And these things aren't huge money. Uh, most of them you're not going to get rich, but a lot of times you can pick these up cheap. Uh, people just getting rid of their kids' toys. Granite fuel truck, looking pretty good. You got a uh, dump truck, $129.99. I believe all these are plastic. I don't think they make any metal ones that I've ever seen anyway. Here's a logging truck. Fire trucks, you see a lot of the garbage trucks. Some of those can be worth $40 to $50. You can find them in good condition. Every time I find them, they're really beat up though. There's a granite truck that sold for like 85 bucks flatbed truck and a lot of this stuff you know brands make them and uh you just can't they have no resale value but when you get a good brand like bruder uh, you can actually make some money on this stuff if you can get it cheap enough <laughs> There's a UPS truck and I'll say bruder on the side of the, the truck or the vehicle or on the bottom so they're pretty easy to spot. A very good bread and butter item in my opinion. But there it is everybody. That is what I had to show you today. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you go out and find something right away that I talked about in this video. For me, when I do a video like this, a lot of times I go out and immediately find something I talked about. It's strange. When you have stuff right in the forefront of your mind after seeing it like this, it's easier to spot when you're out at a sale where there's hundreds of items, that's probably part of it. But if you enjoy this type of video, please hit that like button for me. Please make sure you're subscribed. I will keep making them. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, flipping underscore junk. And this has been Wick. Till next time.